Okay, so welcome everyone to our Valentine's Day special. Um, I am here with my wife, Jessica, and we are also here with Ombre de Mundo because he did not give me the keys to the page to let me do it by myself. So. No, but I actually have things to add. See, that's oh, fine. Oh, okay, he has things to add. <laughs> fine, fine. Um, so, we're here for two reasons. One is uh, Jessica and I just got married back in October, and... One thing we found out about each other really early on is that we are both Zelda fans. Um, after I had proposed to her, she and I were talking you know, extensively about wedding planning. And her suggestion was... I wanted a Zelda-themed wedding. So, sure enough, I was not about to say no to that. So, that's what we did. We actually did have a Zelda-themed wedding. It was... Pretty much the best wedding ever, I am pretty sure. So we just kind of want to like throw out what we did, maybe give ideas for um, you know anybody out there who is looking into doing a Zelda themed wedding or maybe another kind of themed wedding. Because one thing I want to say is that it is possible to make like a themed wedding look really kind of ridiculous <laughs> um, if you go too far with it. Not that it's a bad thing, I guess. It just looks cheesy. Yeah, I mean, if that's what you're into, that's cool, but. Most people kind of want to have a more traditional style wedding, you know, have it kind of be elegant looking and all that, which really fits in with uh, Zelda pretty nicely. So we were able to do some cool yeah. stuff. So I was I was we, trying to um, find your uh, your wedding invitation that you sent because oh. that was also solid theme, but I I don't know where I put it. It's, Why didn't you find it? Uh, because I put it somewhere where I'm like, okay, this is a good place, and now I that's okay. I've got a little copy on here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it real quick. But um, while I'm looking for that, I am going to put up here a few pictures. So the first thing that was all the theme is we actually we did our um, wedding and our reception on two different days. The wedding itself was not incredibly Zelda themed, but the uh, reception itself was in all together um, um, Zelda themed. Um, myself, I didn't actually do anything really Zelda E on at the actual wedding, but Jessica completely surprised me with her wedding dress, which I will show you now. And this was my interpretation of what Zelda would dress in if she was getting married. I've got the long flowy sleeves, I've got the long train, you've got the circlet. She's always got the circlet going on. We would have got. I don't think it's possible for like for a traditional wedding to like go one hundred percent like. Dressed like Zelda, but yeah, that that yeah. would I think it, that would go into the cheesy realm, but right, exactly. Yeah, but so yeah, she just kind of uh, this is more in the cheesy realm here, but um, she was able to like kind of combine traditional with like medieval, I guess is the biggest way to put it, and it turned out really freaking great. Yeah, and so, you have just a regular suit. Yes, I know. I was not as cool. I'm not gonna lie about that part. <laughs> We didn't have a crap load of money to spend on this. You know, we tried to pay for uh, most of it ourselves, but our parents, of course, helped out with a lot of it. But either way, we didn't want to go crazy. So to get ready for it, we actually spent months in advance doing all sorts of different things for the reception to get some cool stuff going for that. Right here, this is our guest table. In the middle is this cool um, thing you can buy on eBay for 30 bucks. It's just this little light that lights up the Hylian crest. And then we've got like kind of an old school pen going on there, and in the basket are actually our wedding favors. I'm going to ha we'll have a uh, zoomed in picture on those here in a second. There you can see one of our centerpieces, not 100% complete because this one we took off the main part of it, but you can see it's got a little light in it. You see those little chalices, I guess they are. So we kind of try to stick with the oh what were they goblets. goblets. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we try to stick with the you know medieval kind of theme, and um, this is what went on the centerpieces. We had a little bit. Of it. Uh... So that's like, actually not Zelda at all. But... No, you can catch fish in yeah, a jar true. in true. Zelda. So I thought it would be cool. That's true. I just wanted. I just really wanted fish. <laughs> but it does fit in that way. That's true. So yeah, we had little beta fish. That's actually what the tickets were for, because we didn't know what to do with a bunch of beta fish after the wedding was over. So we kind of just raffled them off to people. And people actually did want them. Yes. Oh so really? Oh well, there you go. So there you go. So I had the light um, underneath it to kind of illuminate the fish, which looked really cool in the dark. Um, and then it's on the tricorce centerpiece there. And these were our actual wedding favors. So 
these were like really easy to do. We just bought in bulk like a bunch of bottles um, off some website for some Chinese company, and took a bunch of the fun dip, you know, the little colored sugar that you stick things in that Ombre is now going to say, well, in Sweden we have something infinitely better. We probably do, but that's a sign of point. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just filled it with the um, fun, red and blue fun dip, so it looked like, uh, you know, the red and blue potions. Yeah. And then um, on the tag, we have there Jessica and Brent, 11 October 2013. Another quest will start from here, press the start button. Which, of course, you know, is the last line of the first game, which was strangely appropriate. This was um, a problem we had, is where we actually had the wedding, and this is just kind of to give you uh, the thought to kind of think outside the box, just so you um, don't let things get in your way for the wedding, is we had this big yellow thing on the wall, because we were doing it in a gymnasium type thing, mm -hmm. and it was the most hideous looking yellow thing in the world. We just wanted to cover it up with something. Well, thankfully for us, the Triforce happened to be yellow, so we just took a bunch of green paper, covered it up, and made the Triforce. <laughs> like, it, it looks really... It looks like it was really planned out. For sure. Like, let me tell you, make sure you start finding your wedding months ahead. If you're not doing a wedding planner, which those are expensive, so I imagine most people don't do wedding planners, you want to make sure that you do everything, like, far ahead in advance. Because, you know, we probably started getting everything really together four or five months beforehand. And we spent almost every weekend doing something for it. Yeah, and like we were still working right up until the day of the wedding, so um, so it's really good to like just kind of plan ahead what you want to do, really brainstorm a lot, and acquire all the materials quickly. <laughs> I see. So, um, our cake was actually made by a friend of mine. She is a fan of making cakes, and you can't really see all the words on it, but um, you'll notice that they use the Hylian font from Twilight Princess. So on the cake, it has our names on it. It says Brent and Jessica, Pap and Fuss on the top layer. Second layer says um, sealed, married, and eternity, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And then on the bottom layer, it's, you know, the biggest track horse with the Highland Crest on it. And here we go with toppers. So these little things can be bought off Etsy, um, off this seller that does a bunch of little bead pixel arts. Or you can make them yourself if yes. you're really into getting the melting beads. Yes, if you can do that. I did not trust my skills with melting beads. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we got these off Etsy, which if you really need some like really niche stuff that you may not, well, definitely won't be able to find in stores, check out Etsy because there's some fans that make some really cool stuff on there. Now, here's a thing I should also mention about your wedding. Get a photographer for your reception. We, um... <laughs> Since we split it up into two days, we bought a uh, we commissioned a photographer for the actual wedding, and you know had really great pictures for that. Our actual wedding photos were fantastic, and we loved them. But then we asked a friend if she would take photos during the reception, in which she had no idea how to use the camera, let the camera die, and we have about maybe ten photos from the reception. Yes, so very bad quality. Yes, we did at the actual reception itself. We don't have much for. So this is the best picture I could get from the actual cake cutting. And yes, as you can see there, that is in fact the Master Sword being used to cut the Triforce cake. Other than that, you know, we all still had aspects of a regular wedding in it. We had regular songs we're dancing to. We had, uh, you know, a lot of the regular traditions were still there. We didn't have any Zelda-themed food because I don't really know what that would encompass, honestly. Except maybe fish. Yeah. There were already fish. I mean, Off the rocks. Yes. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> we had, I guess we could have called the chicken uh, cuckoos, but oh well. No, we didn't spend a whole lot relatively as far as weddings go. Yeah. It still took planning. It's, we had to like allocate our funds and you know make sure we spread it out properly. But overall, it was something we were able to do kind of uh, with a lot of planning. It turned out really freaking cool. So um, if anyone out there is looking at getting married soon and you guys want to do something cool, check out, like, hopefully this is a giving you some good inspiration for it, especially if you're doing a Zelda themed or any other kind of theme. There's lots of themes you can do. Everything. On our first date, on our way back from the play that we went to, he was telling me how he went to the Zelda concert, and I was really, really jealous, and I thought he was cool. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so did you, did you uh, like, know each other before you started dating? Not really. Um, okay. Technically, yes and no. Like, we knew three, each other through mutual friends. We knew, who we, we knew who each other were. Okay. I guess that's the best way to put it, but... I so never, like, you, you didn't know from the very get-go, like, oh, th this person 
she's really into the same thing I'm into, so let's no clue. go on Absolutely a date. Absolutely no idea. Um, <laughs> so how did you find out? Was uh, it through that concert thing? That yeah, um, well, yeah, it's through that conversation. You know, um, when I was you know still dating around, trying to see you know if I'm interested in this person or this person, um, you know, you really just got to put yourself out there. Like that's how it works. Is like so I would pretty much if I met a girl and I'm like okay so I don't not like her so let's try asking her out see how that goes and so we went out and you know we had we had a lot of conversation as we were talking to we just say like, okay so we like these things the same I and mean, she even asked me who my favorite Pokemon was and I'm like well and so it just became well obviously I'm gonna ask her out again so <laughs> did so, that yeah. kind of seal the deal oh for sure. <laughs> I mean, he was a little more excited at the beginning than I was because I was terrified. When you first start dating someone, you really shouldn't be incredibly invested into that person. Um, you shouldn't be like, you know, okay, I don't want this person to be with me, but don't be like, okay, this is obviously the final person I'm ever going to date because you don't know what things are going to come up in conversation. There might be things that you don't want to, uh, don't want in a relationship, and you just got to kind of feel it out, see how it turns out. So... That's, you know, in our case, I found out real quick that she's exactly what I wanted um, to continue dating. And for her, it took her a little longer to figure out that I was any good. But <laughs> good. I'm just um, cautious. And if you just happen to mention that you went to a Zelda concert and the other person think that's really cool, you should just continue from there. Yes, and actually about that, i got to share something really I am ashamed of about myself back in the day. And is that I kind of used to be ashamed to be a nerd. Um, I used to think like, you know, it was a social outcast status when I was growing up and I felt like, okay, no, I should kind of keep that hidden and not tell anyone. And even on my date with Jessica, I'm like... She was terrified to tell me. I'm like, do I really want to tell her that I went all the way to another state to go to a concert <laughs> for a video game? I went to another country, so you're... you're yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is that if you want to actually get to know someone really, you really have to let them know about you as well, know what you're really about, because eventually they're going to figure it out anyway. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Jessica would have immediately, the first time she came to my house, would have figured out, yeah, I think you might like video games. <laughs> so it's something you should kind of just be open about. So like now I'm completely open about being a nerd, all right? I'm yeah. not going to deny that to But I, I think that too, that's been a lot more kind of socially acceptable just like the past, just few years, just the past few years. Uh, I, I started talking to this this one girl um, who is a pretty uh, well-known uh, Zelda fan artist. We were both on Zelda Universe and we just kind of started talking and of course, you know, we started talking about Zelda because, I mean, we, we both like Zelda and, and it wasn't something, I mean, for us, it was there from the get-go, like that was what we started talking about and then from that we, we started talking about other things like the the weather and the weather. <laughs> yeah, that's, make it so right. that's a big first step. Right? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I was really <laughs> proud. Okay, so I think it's time we go to our callers. All right, from Frodo. Frodo. Frodo seven two four one. Hey, how do you suggest introducing the subject of Zelda slash nerdy stuff to a girl in a conversation? Okay, well, being a girl myself, and just because I happen to like nerdy stuff, it really doesn't matter how you bring it up. I mean, he brought it up because he was talking about his family and how he went out of state to go see the Zelda concert. And that just brought in a flood of nerdy stuff, which is fine. I've also talked to other nerdy guys who would just, like, randomly be like, yeah, so last weekend I was hanging out with some guy friends, playing Super Smash Brothers, you know. If the girl likes it and it, or she likes you, it's really not going to matter. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> and generally speaking, if you're on a first date, there's a lot of small talk going on. Um, at some point, the girl's going to ask you, what do you like to do for fun? And yeah. at that point, be honest and say, I like playing uh, video games. My favorite series is Legend of Zelda. I assume your favorite series is Legend of Zelda because you're a sane individual. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's just something you talk about. So you, know, you ask her how, um, what she's into, she'll say whatever she's into, she'll ask you, and there you go. If she yeah, has yeah. absolutely no idea anything nerdy, just break it down into small things so that she yeah, can understand. Yeah, don't, don't, um, don't overpower it if it's not something they're into, for sure. Right, right. it's more like, you say, oh, you know, video games. 
And, yeah. and if she's, you know, somewhat interested, she'll ask what kind of video games or what video game or, hey, I like this video game. Yeah. Because yeah. chances are there's, um, again, there's going to be things that are different about you from everyone else. You're going to like some things that other people are going to care nothing about. I guarantee you that. So yeah. you don't want to bore a person during a conversation on a date. You want to make sure things stay interesting. So don't delve too far into things until like they kind of raise interest in it. Yeah. I see a question. Yes. From Frodo, what is your nerdiest way to ask someone out? I've never really used a nerdy way to ask someone out. Most of the time, I like. I'll have something ready. Like, I should probably mention that's a really good idea. If you're gonna ask someone out, have something ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but girls don't like it when you ask them out. And they say, okay, well, what would you like to do? And you're like, I don't know, what do you want? Like, <laughs> Bad idea. Yeah. It, Bad it instantly idea. shows that you're indecisive and not probably a very reliable individual. Whereas yeah. when I ask Jessica out, I'm like, hey, um, I wanna, I'm going to go see this play next weekend. I want you to come with me. There we go. I had something ready to go. And I will say, uh, I said in the beginning, I was really cautious because he asked me out in a with, to a really cool date, I said yes. If he hadn't, I most likely would have said no. Don't walk up to a girl and say, it's dangerous to go alone, come with me. Uh, <laughs> unless you know for a fact that she'll get the reference and be like, okay, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, that, would be so, a good, that would be a good uh, That would be a good future video, maybe, for, for CUTV. We can just go out and... Um, bad dating like ideas? This. Yeah, yeah, no, just like see how many people we have to ask until someone gets it. That would be pretty yeah. funny, actually. Okay, we have a caller. Um, what's your favorite co-op slash multiplayer game you two play together? Um, right now, yeah, probably Rayman Legends. Rayman right now. is great. Um, oh Rayman, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, Rayman Legends um, is the first game we ever played on the Wii U. We played it in a Best Buy demo, and it's the reason why we own a Wii U. Other than that, um, I think I mentioned we're playing Four Swords right now on 3DS. Um, Alpha Crucis, Crucis, Alpha, Alpha Crucis says, "Are video games a bad idea for a date? First date, probably. Depending, okay, depending depends on how well you know the person. Do you, I mean, do you know them beforehand, or is this the first date because you've never met the person? If you know the person and you already know the person really likes video games, that could be incredibly fun. If you do some other stuff with it, if you've been dating with the person, great date." It's totally a good idea for a date. Like a date never has to be like something where you're physically going somewhere. I recommend it highly for the first few dates, um, just because a it makes you both on neutral ground. It can kind of be uncomfortable if you know you're doing early dates in someone's house. Because I mean, unless you, I don't know, maybe things move quickly. I don't know. Either way, um, but later on, it's like you know, it's totally cool to just chill at home and watch something or play a game or do board games or whatever. Like we did that a lot, and it's way fun. Yeah, way fun. Like I said, it really depends on how you know the person. So, for instance, like you, you had mutual friends, right? Um, a few, yeah, but it was kind of um, we did, it did not enough mutual to know each other at all. Okay, but, but so let's that say, existed. yeah, I've she knew him, I existed. I said hello to him. I didn't like know anything about. Right. Okay, but yeah, so let's say you know that you met at like a, a mutual friend, and like you were both there, like on a party or whatever, and you were playing, I don't know, card games or whatever, that party, and then you can kind of see, like, oh, well, this person enjoy playing card games or whatever. If you want to play really slow, just throw a party at your house and invite her as, like, just one of the one of the guests and have multiple people there. What? You did that. Oh, that's true. I did do that. <laughs> he did that. See? He heeded my advice, and he didn't even yes, know I, I took over his advice retroactively. <laughs> 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 and it does... It, I'm not going to lie. That was very nice for me, because, again... Cautious, and he had a little party. It was a huge party. I mean, he only had a couple of friends. We yeah, were like actually people. we people. were watching Avatar because oh, I'm sorry. Cause I should say Legend of Korra. Legend of Korra. Legend of Korra. Yeah. Because it was coming out. And it was cool, and so he's like, "Yeah, I've got a couple of friends that are watching that. Why don't you come?" And I was like, "All right." Yeah. Yes. All right, guys. Right. See ya. Over Peace. now.